Using mouse events such as mouse down and mouse move are fine when you're working with a desktop only application, but as soon as you need to move out to mobile or tablets, you need to start supporting touch events and even things like pen interactions. And that is not something you can do with just mouse events, so now you need to add in touch events, and doing both of those at the same time is difficult. This is why there are pointer events which combine together all the best parts of mouse events and touch events and also add in additional features for things like pen support. On top of that, these pointer events add in additional methods that save you tons of code when doing common tasks. I'm going to cover that at the very end of this video, and this is one of the best reasons to use pointer events. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner, and today I'm going to do that by covering pointer events. Now you can see on the right hand side here I have a console open and you can also see a mobile view of my environment and this is actually straight from my mobile phone. So I have my phone right here and that is the exact view from my phone so when I interact with my phone it's going to show up on this screen right here. Now if you want to see how I connected my phone to my computer like this for debugging you're going to want to check out the video I'm going to have linked in the cards and description. That also goes over touch events as well so it's going to be a really good primer for this video if you haven't seen that yet. Now to get started with pointer events, the one thing I want to say is that they cover all the same things that mouse and touch events do. So you have like pointer down, which covers the same thing as mouse down, pointer up, pointer move, pointer enter, pointer leave, all those common mouse events, just replace the word mouse with pointer. And that's essentially going to give you the ability to use mouse and touch events instead of just mouse or just touch. So let me show you an example of what this looks like. We can just come in here and inside our video, which right now is just this black section on our screen, our black section is a video, and this red and gray section is our timeline. So we're going to add an event listener, and this is going to be for our pointer down. So whenever we push or touch or click on our screen anywhere, it's going to fire this event. And for now, I'm just going to console.log out that event. So what I could do is I could push on my phone, and that's going to do it, or I could click over here. Both of those are going to fire an event. So this first event is from when I tapped on my phone, and if we open it up, you're going to see if we scroll down a little bit, there's this key called is primary that's going to be set to true if it's the first thing that you push on the screen. So the first finger you put on the screen is primary. All the other ones are going to be non-primary, so this will be false. And also, there's going to be a pointer type. In our case, this is touch because we touched on the screen. If we minimize this and go to this other one, this is where I clicked on the screen, and you can see it still says pointer type of touch. The reason for that is because it's emulating this mobile view right here. If I move this to the side, though, I have over here the desktop version of the app, and if I just inspect this, go to our console, and I click, and we come in here, you can now see that the pointer type right here is mouse because this is an actual click event on the screen. Another thing you're going to see is a pointer ID. This is like a unique ID for each touch point that you have. So if you have multiple fingers on the screen, each is going to have its own ID, so you can really easily tell which finger is on the screen and which one is doing all the different actions. Now let's just go back here to this view where we have the mobile view, because there's a few other things that I want to talk about. We're just going to come inside of here. You're going to see that there's a height and a width property. And this height and width is actually based on how large of the surface area you're touching on the screen. So the more of your finger you put on the screen, the larger this height and this width property are going to be. So if you have a really big finger like your thumb, these are going to be larger values than, for example, a pinky. Another really interesting thing is these other properties that are really good for like pen type of interactions. You can see we have this twist property, this tilt X and Y. These are things that are really good for pens. Same thing with like pressure. So if you have a device that can determine how hard you're pressing on something, how tilted it is, how much rotation you have, this is really good mostly for like pens. You can do a lot of additional stuff with that information. But with the basics here, what I'm going to do is we're going to take into account the width, the height, and the position. And I'm just going to draw on the screen exactly where I'm pressing. So in order to do this, we need to have three different types of events. We need to have a pointer down event, we need to have a pointer up to know when we let go of the mouse, and then we need a pointer move so we can actually move this place wherever I'm touching with the movement. So we're going to do the pointer down first. I just want to add a dot to our screen. So we're going to create a dot, which is just going to be document.createElement. We're just going to create a simple div, and I'm going to give it a class here. Whoops. Dot, dot, class list, add this dot class. And if we go to our CSS, this dot class, all it does is give it an absolute position, a background color, and it centers it. That's all this class is doing for us, just really basic code. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to set the ID of this to that pointer ID. And if you remember, this pointer ID is just the ID of the thing that's on the screen. So the first finger we put has an ID of one, the second one has an ID of two. And this just allow us to figure out which fingers are being pressed and removed from the screen, because you can have multiple fingers on the screen at the same time. That's why we have this ID right here. Next, what I want to do is I want to position our dot. I'm just going to pass our dot into here as well as our event information. And then finally, what I want to do is I want to append our dot to the screen. Now let's just write that position dot function. 
It's going to be a pretty straightforward function for the most part. We're taking in our event and our dot. And in here, really, all I want to do is I want to set the position of everything. So this is going to be setting our width, our height, our left, our top, all of those different properties. So we can just say, for example, dot dot style dot width is equal to, and we can say e dot width, and we're going to put our pixels at the end of that. And I'm also just going to multiply this by 10 so it's easy to see, because something that's one pixel wide is going to be really hard for you to see. So we're just going to multiply it by 10 so it's a little bit easier for you to see. We're going to do the same thing with our height. And then what we want to do is we want to do our left and our top. So our left position here is just going to be our page X, and then our top here is gonna be our page Y. And with just this simple little bit of code, when I press on the screen, we should hopefully see a red dot appear. And of course we have an error, cannot execute append on document. We need this to be a document body, there we go. So now if I press on my screen, looks like nothing's happening. Obviously that's because I'm multiplying my X and my Y by 10. I really don't wanna do that. So now if I press, you can see we have that showing up. And if I try to make my finger larger, for example, I use my thumb, you can see that it is a much larger box showing up on our screen because the width and height of my thumb is larger than the width and height of like my index finger, for example. So now what I wanna do is I wanna make it so this box can follow my finger around and I can show you how the width and height dynamically calculates based on exactly how much of your finger is down at the time that it happens. So we can just come in here, add an event listener, and this is gonna be for position, whoops, position move. Going to take in that e object here and this should actually be pointer move there we go and all i want to do is call position dot pass it in e and our dot and our dot is just going to be document dot get element by id and the id here is e dot target or not sorry e dot pointer id and also i'm going to just turn this into a variable real quick so we're going to say dot is equal to that and if our dot is for some reason equal to null, I just want to return. So if our dot has removed itself from the screen somehow, I just want to make sure we don't actually try to position it because it's already gone. So now, if I just click on the screen and I start moving my finger around, you're going to see it moved a little bit, but then it stopped moving. And if I try it again, you're going to notice it disappears again. It stops moving. The reason for this is because the browser is firing a cancel event. We can just listen for that real quick. We can say video .add event listener for position, I'm sorry, pointer cancel. And all I want to do inside of here is I'm just going to console.log cancel. So now if we just press and I move, you're going to see it logs out cancel. And the reason for this is because the browser has a bunch of built-in interaction. For example, if I push on the screen and I pull down, it's going to do a refresh. And as you can see, it just refreshed our screen. So these different type of browser interactions, same thing with like Zoom, all these different interactions are built into the browser. And once you start to interact with one of those interactions, it's going to cancel your current pointer event for movement or whatever is going on because the browser is taking over that movement. So what we need to do in order to fix this is we can just go into our CSS, we can find our video, and all we wanna do is say touch action none. And what that essentially says is don't do any of the default touch interactions, no refreshing, no zooming, none of that. Everything is gonna be handled on our own JavaScript. So now if we just refresh our page real quick, so we have a blank slate to work with, and I press and I start to move, you're gonna notice you can see this moving and we don't have that cancel. If I pull down, it doesn't do a refresh. And you can see as I put more and less on my finger on the screen, it's getting bigger and smaller. I can also put multiple fingers and you can see I can move all those around like this. And now the very last thing we need to do is make those dots disappear when we move our finger up. So we can say video dot add event listener pointer up. And we wanna take in that E right here and we want to get our dot. So we can just say dot is this. If our dot is null, do nothing. Otherwise, dot dot remove. So all we're doing is removing the dot when we lift our finger up. And I want to do the same thing on cancel. So inside of here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So in case we have a cancel for another reason, it's still going to remove the dot. So now let's just see if I push my finger, move it around, lift it up, you can see that it disappears. I can put multiple fingers on, move them all around, get rid of one, two, three, however many I want to do. And you can see that that is working exactly as we expect. Now this right here pretty much covers the basics of pointer events, and these work exactly the same as mouse events and touch events. But what if we wanted to move on to those additional features I talked about at the beginning of the video? Well, to use those, I have this timeline example down here. So on a YouTube video, you have the timeline, and when you click on the timeline and you move around your mouse, you know, the handle follows it around and it scrubs to that point in the video. Well, I want to be able to emulate that using these pointer events, and it's so much easier to do this with pointer events than things like mouse events and touch events. Let me show you what I'm talking about. For now, I'm going to get rid of all of this code that we have right here, and instead I'm going to be referencing our timeline. So inside of our timeline, I want to add an event listener or pointer down. I want to get that event. And inside of here, I essentially want to move this handle to whatever position is actually doing where we clicked on the mouse. 
So we can just say we're going to have a function called set timeline position. And in here, I'm just going to pass it in the event. And let's write out that function set timeline position. What we need to do is we need to get the size of essentially our video. So we can say rect equals e dot target dot get founding client rect. What that's going to do is it's going to give me the dimensions of this timeline section so I can figure out how far along we are percentage wise. And to do that, I can just say e dot client x divided by rect dot width times 100. This is going to give me a value between zero and 100. And we can use that as a percentage value. So we can say video, I'm sorry, timeline dot style dot whoops, style dot set property. And we want to set a property called handle size. We look at our CSS real quick, you can see it's actually called handle position, but we have this variable called handle position, which determines where our handle is going to be. And it's a percentage value between zero and 100. So handle position, we're going to pass it a percentage, which is this value right here. Let me just copy this, put this inside of some quotes, and we want to convert this to a percent value. So this is going to give us a value between zero and 100. So now in order to test this, I'm not going to do this in the mobile version, I'm going to do it in the desktop version just because it's a little bit easier. But if I click on this timeline, you can see that our pointer here, our handle is moving to the exact place I click. So this little bit of code is working as we expect. So now what I want to do is I want to set up a move event as well. So when we move our mouse over this, it's going to also follow us. So let's do that real quick. We can say that we want to do timeline dot add event listener on pointer move. And all we want to do is call that set timeline position. Now, hopefully, if I click and I move, you can see that it is setting to that position. Now this is mostly working, but there's a little bit of a bug in our code. That's because this e.target should be referencing our timeline instead, that'll fix this issue. So now wherever we move, you can see that this is going in the right place. But the problem is if I let go of my mouse, I've let go of the mouse down button, it's still moving. We need to make sure when we lift our pointer up, we stop setting this position. To do this, we can just come in here, we can say timeline.addEventListener. This is gonna be for pointer up. And we want to make sure that inside of this, all we do is remove our event listener for pointer move. So remove event listener, pointer move, and this is the set timeline position. And I want to make sure this pointer up only fires once. So we're just going to say once true. That should be all we need to do. So now if I save and I click and I move, you can see that it's moving. And as soon as I let go of the mouse, you can see it stops moving. Now this may seem like it's working as we expect, but there's a little bit of a bug. It's not really a bug, it's just an issue with usability. If I click on this and I start moving, as long as I stay within the timeline, this gray area, it's going to work. But if I move my mouse outside the gray area, it now no longer works until I move it back in the gray area. This is a bit of a problem, especially on mobile, because it's hard to stay within that small of an area when you're moving around and scrubbing your timeline. So this is where Pointer Events has a really cool feature that allows you to make this type of work really easy to do. And all it takes is one single function. This function right here, we just take our timeline and we want to call set pointer capture. And we just pass in our pointer ID. So we could say pointer ID. What this single function right here does is it says take all of the pointer events on the entire screen, every single pointer event that ever happens, and make it so those pointer events happen on our timeline itself. So now when we click and we start moving, even if we move off into here, our pointer event is over our video, but this pointer capture says, take all the pointer events that happen and make them occur on this timeline element right here. So that's all this does. So when we save, now when I try to move this, you can see even when I move my screen or my cursor off the timeline, it's still following exactly as we expect. And when I release, it's working just fine. And that's because by default, this set pointer capture gets removed whenever there's a pointer up or a pointer cancel event that is fired. Now, if you really wanted to, for example, you weren't using like pointer up and you wanted to manually cancel this pointer capture, well, you could do that as well. You could just say timeline dot release pointer capture. And then you could just pass it in here, that pointer ID, which would be E dot pointer ID. And we just need to have that E right there. And this is going to do the exact same thing, but this already happens by default. Also, you can also call has pointer capture. And this is essentially going to tell you if this object has the pointer capture for this pointer ID, which is useful if you need to figure out if something is being captured or not. But by adding this one single line of code right here, you've essentially made it so you can use this dragging without actually being within the bounds of it. And that's really useful for things like timelines and sliders like this. And without this line of code, it's actually a bit of a pain to write this out by hand. I've done it before, and it requires at least double the code we have here when you can just do it with one line if you use pointer events. 
If you haven't already watched my touch event listener video, it's gonna be linked over here. I highly recommend you check it out. It's a great follow-up to this video. And if you have seen that, I highly recommend you check out my full event listener crash course linked over here. It covers everything you need to know about event listeners, including some of the more nitty gritty advanced features that most people don't even realize you can do with event listeners. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.